we all know like if you have a disease what would change you know like what would happen if you found out like a horrible disease like you have cancer what would change and immediately there's less of that split that denial we're like wow we start becoming aware of all this stuff that we just keep blocking off or putting off and what we don't realize is that we do have a disease and that's called being alive like none of us get out of here alive we all die we could die tomorrow we could die in 20 years you know you could die in a week you have no idea so just reflecting on that just brings a lot more authentic data and gets you much more aligned with what is authentic to you uh, in my experience well um, it's kind of personal to me because about three months ago I had a near-death experience I suffered a stroke, which you can see signs of. I don't really have use of my left side of my body. And that stroke, um, if it wasn't for my wife who was there next to me in the car I was driving, I probably would have died. I would have gotten in a horrible accident or I would have had irreparable brain damage right now. I came very close to dying. And um, it did shake me up and it did kind of alter. So I wrote that chapter and that's a chapter I feel very strongly about but it was brought home to me in a very visceral manner. Mm. And I remember I did a book with 50 Cent that you yeah. interviewed me about. And 50 had a near-death experience, much stronger than mine. Somebody shot a gun that distance right through his mouth, through his jaw, and he took nine bullets. And he saw that proverbial light as he lay in this hospital bed, that light that comes from, oh, I'm about to die. and. I noticed that people like that, or even with myself, after that sense of experience, there's a certain calmness that comes over you. Like nothing really will phase you anymore. Because what could compare, what could be worse than what you've already been through? So I have this feeling that the fact that we live in a culture that's very avoidant of death. Human nature is such that even from primitive times, we're the only animal that's aware of our own mortality, and it's had a profound impact on us. It's part of what led to the creation of religions and the belief of an afterlife, that we're all going to maybe go to a heaven, you know? So we're very much afraid, deeply afraid of this feeling of death. And in our culture, it has a different form. We don't maybe believe in the afterlife, but what we do is we deny death very deeply. We deny its presence. We never see anybody who dies. You know, 200 years ago, you were around people in your house or on the streets. You saw literally somebody die. It had a very visible presence to you. You saw animals were being killed so that you could eat them, right? Death had a presence. We have now banished it to hospitals and to factory farms where chickens are slaughtered. We never have to confront it. And when we watch movies, we see a hundred people being shot with a machine gun. But it's like a cartoon. It has no reality. So we're living in a world in, we are in deep, deep denial of the fact that we are mortal creatures. And I believe that with that denial comes a great deal of latent anxiety in your life. It makes you anxious and fearful for a lot of little, smaller things in life, you know, which is why somebody who's had a near death experience gets rid of that anxiety and doesn't have that kind of avoidant mentality. So I want to open up, I want you to, we tend to turn our back towards death, and I want you to turn around and face it square in the eye every single day. It's not a negative thing, it's an immensely beautiful thing. First of all, you know, you are alive, you know you feel that you're alive, but by not realizing that you're dead, that you're contained inside of you, your, your mortality, you're only half alive. You're only dealing with part of the truth. And so in, in Zen philosophy and samurais, they want you to connect with that dead energy in your gut, in your hara right here, so that it'll make you feel more alive. And then realizing that the people around you are going to die will make you connect with them on a much, more, on a much deeper level. I was recently in New York City, and I was walking in the streets, and I saw all of these hundreds of people walking around me on Fifth Avenue. And for a moment, I was imagining that all of these people are going to die at some point. In 70 years, not one single one of them will be around. And they, maybe they look, maybe I don't like them for this, that, or the other reason. But when I think about that fact, 
I have deep wells of empathy that they are also confronting the same reality that the I am, and they're afraid and they're fearful of it. So confronting this mortality connects you to other people, and it also opens your mind up to something great. I call this the sublime. And I think one of the things that really oppresses people in the world today is that our lives are so immersed in banality, in triviality, in the day-to-day -day grind. And we have no sense of what is immense about the world. And death is the most immense possible experience. We have no idea what it is. It's like this great, vast darkness. And I say by confronting this thought of your own mortality, you open your mind up to other realities. You open your mind up to the vastness of space and time that, you know, which is a, quite an overwhelming feeling to realize that eight, some three or four billion years ago, life began on this planet. And the fact that you are alive now is extremely, extremely lucky. The set of circumstances that led to your being alive. These kinds of thoughts are sublime thoughts and they come from the fact that you're confronting your mortality and you're opening your mind up to this much wider experience than what you were that when you're afraid versus the anxiety ridden and avoidant and attitude that most of us feel. So confronting your mortality is perhaps the most liberating step of all and is why I ended the book on that note. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the ultimate confronting reality, not the illusion. It's like life and death. Right. It's the ultimate red pill in that sense.